we've got a lot of soybeans uh, that are going to need to be stored for a long period of time. And uh, so I'm really focusing on two areas, some things uh, particularly related to soybean storage and then another piece related to more just alternative storage in general. So we'll go ahead and go through the soybean part. Uh, one of the things that, that Fran will be sharing is that his expectation is that we're going to need to be storing these soybeans into next summer. Uh, and so one of the things that we quickly find out is that the amount of mechanical damage uh, that we have uh, as we harvest the beans has a huge impact on the storability. So we need to really be paying more attention maybe to the optimum harvest moisture content this year. Uh, if you look at the literature, uh, we're looking at about 13% moisture as being the uh, typical uh, number that we see for minimizing the damage. As we get below about 11% moisture, we see uh, an increase in, in losses, uh, mechanical damage, as well as field losses, uh, and is going to have a significant impact on uh, the storage life. So I think it's, it's critical. The first message uh, related to soybeans is that uh, we need to be more concerned about harvesting in that 11 to 13 percent moisture range, if at all possible. The next thing uh, that I'm going to touch on is one that I've been covering in a lot of my presentations, uh, and that is that we tend to think of 13 percent as the moisture content for soybeans. That's really established based on uh, storage through that first winter. Uh, if we're thinking of storing into a warmer storage period or for a longer time frame, I really think we need to be targeting closer to 11 percent. And just to help farmers uh, and others kind of put things in perspective, uh, sometimes we forget how the various types of grain compare. And I use the equilibrium moisture content as a way to to make that comparison. If we look at six, 70 degrees and 60 percent relative humidity, equilibrium moisture content of corn is about 12.8, hard red spring wheat about 13, 13.3, soybeans at 10.8. And so really to be equivalent, we're talking 13 percent moisture on the corn and, and wheat. And to be comparable to that, uh, we would be looking at 11 percent on the soybeans. So even though it, it seems lower, uh, it really, from a storage standpoint, isn't that much different. I debated about including this slide, but um, anything that we can do to more gently handle the beans, the less likely we're going to have breakage. And, and one of the first indications of deterioration of the a grain uh, is an uh, impact on germination. And this was a, some stuff that was published, and I've cited it on the bottom, uh, that comes out of Poland. Uh, there they saw germination losses of 10 percent and 31 percent when soybeans fell from a height of one meter and two meters. So a little over a yard or a little over two yards in height. So even in the handling and dropping into a, a storage, a lot of times we overlook how we, we handle those beans. But I think it is important that we need to be gentle in handling those beans for long-term storage. Same thing when we start looking at moisture content. Uh, moisture content of 12% uh, suffers less damage than it means even at 10 and 11. So it gets to be a little bit of a balancing act between making sure they're dry enough to store and getting them too dry 
so that we start seeing an increase in the amount of damage. I've got this table out there. Uh, it's up on my website. It's going to be in some of the press releases that are going out, uh, listing approximate allowable storage time for soybeans. And I've picked again uh, the 13% moisture at 70 degrees only gives us an allowable storage time of about 70 days. Now this is based on the um, not the oil portion of the seed, but the respiration of, of the rest of the seed. And so what it's telling us is that controlling that temperature uh, is, is very, very important. Roughly a 10 degree drop in temperature will double the allowable storage time. And as we continue on that line of thought, uh, the free fatty acids, uh, which are the part of the oil of the seed, uh, show a, you know, the free fatty acids is a negative aspect of that oil, and that increases with moisture and temperature and time. And again, putting things in perspective, uh, if we're storing 12% beans at 70 degrees, we will have enough degradation take place that our allowable storage life is less than four months. So the key item there is that we need to be rapidly cooling the soybeans during the fall, bring them down to about 30 degrees for winter storage, and then keeping them as cool as we can uh, as we go through the spring and summer. Uh, so aeration and temperature management is a critical part of this storage management. We need to constantly be monitoring uh, the grain, uh, looking at, at temperature, uh, doing physical exams, smelling, looking for insects. Uh, some of the new technology includes measuring carbon dioxide levels, but it, it is going to require monitoring so that we can take the appropriate action before we have problems. And so I'm recommending that we check at least every two weeks, and some of what I'm putting out says weekly until it's cooled for winter storage, every couple, three weeks during the winter when it's the coldest, and then back to every one to two weeks during the spring and summer. Certainly use the technology that's available, but I'm concerned that a lot of our farmers are, are turning everything over to automation. Now that we've got temperature sensors in the bin or we've got the fan controllers on the bin, that's taking care of the grain. And they're just tools that help us ma better manage the grain but we still need to be uh, applying that management, uh, making sure that all the equipment is doing what we want it to do. Now as we shift gears and look at some of the options for, in particular, on-farm storage, uh, the key criteria is the same as it always is. Keep the grain dry, uh, permit management, which primarily means aeration systems, the ability to monitor that grain, keep the pests away, both insects and critters, filling and emptying, uh, how do we fill the, the containers, how do we get the grain out, and then economics, of course, is part of that concern. With buildings, uh, I think it used to be more of an option where we would put grain in, in buildings, uh, filling and unloading gets to be a challenge in a lot of flat storage or buildings. Many times they don't have the this wall strength required. Putting aeration into these buildings gets to be difficult. Uh, the grain has to go in dry. We can't put damp grain in. And the comment that I have made a couple times this week is that when the comparison is between storing your $300,000 combine versus putting some beans in the building, I know that the combine is going to go into that building. So really I see two options from an alternative storage standpoint. One that I think we need to be considering is the grain bags, uh, 
couple of things to keep in mind is that it does not permit us to put in grain that is at a higher moisture content. It does not prevent mold growth. It does not prevent insect infestations. Uh, so the grain going in must be dry. In this case, if we're putting in uh, soybeans, that would be 11%. If we're taking corn out of an existing building and putting in, uh, that would be 13, 14 at very most. Uh, run the bags north to south. Uh, we want even heating from the solar radiation on both sides. Moisture will tend to go to the cool side if we have an, a temperature variation. They need to go on an elevated location with drainage, and we need to consider what's the access to the bag loader and unloader, and figure that cost into the equation as we're making a comparisons. One that uh, I think is, is less preferred, uh, and that would be uncovered piles. Uh, a one inch rain will increase the moisture content uh, by nine percentage points. If we were able to control it so all of that moisture was confined to the top foot of corn in this case, and it's going to be essentially the same on soybeans, uh, that's nine percentage points. So all of a sudden we have in reality a couple, three feet of spoiled grain. Uh, if we take a 25 foot tall pile, that's 59,000 bushels. Just the one foot off the top amounts to about 13 percent of that pile. And to put some dollars on it, even at four dollars a bushel, that's $39,000. So um, we just cannot have uncovered piles. Uh, they're not going to dry out on their own. The wind goes over the top. And so if we are going to do something in a pile, it needs to be a prepared uh, pile, a uh, prepared surface that on the ground uh, must have a cover on it immediately so that we don't get any rain on that pile. Uh, we need to be using uh, suction on those fans to help hold the cover down. And then we still need to manage the temperature. So we need a designed and managed aeration system. All those components are important. Uh, at elevators, uh, I refer to them as Bunker storage, uh, they're very much a, uh, an alternative way, uh, but they include all those parameters. Uh, we have a prepared surface. We put dry grain in there. The cover goes on. We have the aeration, and you can see it in the bottom left picture there, uh, ductwork underneath the cover to help the air come in. Uh, aeration pans at the bottom to bring the air out. Uh, it is essentially providing all of the things that we talked about at the beginning. And if we're going to pile grain and have success, it needs to include all of those. And that brings me to the end of mine. And I'm sure we'll repeat it again, and it's been in the news articles already. Uh, some of this material is already up online under the NDSU Extension Service um, alerts category uh, under the soybean area. Uh, 